I want to go over how to do some of these problems and that way it gives you an idea of where to start and what to do. So I'm going to do all the evens just because it should give you a pretty good idea. For numbers 1 through 4, we are going to be substituting in the value of each of the variables and determining if it is true. If it's not true, we're going to have that does not equal. If, for example, if I plug 9 times 2 plus 17 equals 35, well, 9 times 2 is 18. 18 plus 17 equals 35. Good. Okay. But if I were to plug it in here, 9 times 2 equal or 9 times 2 is 18 plus 17 does not equal 21. So that is where that does not equal to comes in. So let's go ahead and jump into this. 8 minus 2, and then the first one that I'll try is negative 3. 2 times negative 3 equals negative 2. Well, we know that negative 2 times negative 3 gives me a positive 6, and that does not give me a negative 2. So negative 3 doesn't work. 8 minus 2 times 0 equals negative 2. I should see this pretty quickly, that it actually doesn't work because negative 2 times 0 is 0, and 8 plus 0 does not give me negative 2. So then our last option here is 8 minus 2 times 5 equals negative 2. Please feel free to use a calculator if you need to. 8 minus 2 times 5 is 10. And 8 minus 10 does give me negative 2. So B should equal 5. Just one more as practice. For number 4, 6 times 4 minus 5 plus 5 times 4 equals 105. 6 times 4 gives me 24 minus 5 plus 20. I know that I can't possibly add and subtract these numbers together to get 105, so I know that this does not work. 6 times 7 minus 5 plus 5 times 7 equals 105. Let's see. So 6 times 7 is 42 minus 5 plus 5 times 7 is 35. Again, not going to equal 105. 7 doesn't work. 6 times 10 minus 5 plus 5 times 10. So 6 times 10 is 60 minus 5 plus 5 times 10 is 50. 60 minus 5 is 55, plus 50, we're getting close, 55 plus 50 is 105, therefore, t equals 10 is the correct solution here. Moving down, in this one, we're not trying to figure out which one works, we're trying to substitute each x value in to get the appropriate y value in return. So we'll take and we'll plug this negative 5, this 2, and this 4 in to see what the matching coordinate is in the y value. Okay. So for our first one, y equals negative 4 times negative 5 plus 9. Well, negative 4 times negative 5 gives me 20 plus 9 gives me 29. So it should be 5 comma 29. Second one, y equals negative 4 times 2 plus 9. So y equals negative 8 plus 9. y should equal negative 8 plus 9 gives me a positive 1. And last but certainly not least, y equals negative 4 times 4 
plus 9, y equals negative 16 plus 9, and negative 16 plus 9 should give me negative 7. That's all we're doing here. We're taking, we're plugging in. It's giving us practice on being able to substitute values and come to a conclusion. Number eight, same process. Y equals negative, negative nine plus nine. So negative times a negative will give me a positive. And nine plus nine gives me 18. Plugging a 1 in, so negative 1 plus 9, will give me a negative 1 plus 9, which will give me 8. And finally, y equals 5, so plug that in negative 5 plus 9, y equals negative 5 plus 9. Negative 5 plus 9 should give me a positive 4. So your coordinates there would be 5, 4. Moving down. We're trying to complete the table here. So these ones can be a little bit challenging, and it's a lot like the work that we did today. We're starting with something, and we're building a pattern. So you make $15 payment on your loan of $500 at the end of each month. So the amount of money that you owe at the end of each month is going to be demonstrated here. And we just have to make sure that we're careful about how we're writing stuff. So... So you start with $500, and it doesn't really show it. So I'm off to the side, I'm gonna start with a loan of $500. And every month, I'm paying $15 off of it. So I'm going to need to take minus 15, so that'd be $485. Minus 15 again, $470. Minus 15 again, 455 minus 15 again, that looks like an eight, that looks like a five. $440, minus 15 again, 425, again, 410, and again, $395. Now, I would like it if you included your units in your response because we need to know what we're talking about here. There we go. So for number 12, a little bit different scenario, but we're still going to follow a pattern. So after one week, we need to figure out how much money we've saved. At the beginning, we saved $25. So we can say at week zero, we had $25. Every week after that, we're saving $10. So we're adding $10 to our bank account the entire time. So we'll start with 25, and then after week one, 35, 45, 55, 65, and so on. Keep adding 10. So at the end of seven whole weeks, you have $95 that you've saved up. Look at you. For number 14, we're trying to set up different coordinates on a graph. And it can be challenging, but just keep in mind that this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis. So we're going to look at our x values first and then our y values. Here the x value is zero, so we're going to go right or left zero spaces, and then up 14. So it would be one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, look at that. There's a nice little line there, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh, look at that, another line there. So we know that every five has a more solid, or has a solid line. So what we can do is we can actually start at zero, 
and go up to 15, which is here, and then go down one. So we know that right here is zero comma 14. Four comma 10, so just like we did before with the y values, we also know that these are five leaps of five on the x-axis. So we can go over to five back one, so we know that this is gonna be four and up to 10. So four comma 10 is right there. Seven, we'll go a little bit past that five marker and seven up four comma seven, or seven seven would be right here. Nine is right before the 10 and five is right on the five, so we would be here. That's all we're doing. We're graphing the ordered pairs, not worrying about the, the line that's created or anything else, just getting practice in ordered pairs. And the final one, same process, little bit different numbers, but we're still gonna work through the same thing. So we're gonna work on our X and our Y axis. One comma four should be right here. We're gonna go one to the right and four up. Next one, we're gonna go two to the right and seven up. Three to the right and 10 up. Four to the right and 13 up. And look at that, it actually makes a pretty solid straight line if we were to connect them, but we're not. That will be later. That's all we're doing there. For all of the even numbers, you should be able to go back and review as needed. If you need help on the odds, feel free to reach out.